Oh, look at that. That's me photographing a Mercedes AMG SLS. You know what? I take you with me on the shoot and for the post-production of this beautiful car. My name is Matthias Bayer. I'm a photographer based in Winterthur, Switzerland. I mainly shoot architecture, real estate and obviously cars. So let's go. Isn't that a beautiful car, that silver paint job with the red interior, that classic silver arrow look? Just phenomenal. I had the chance to shoot that car for a garage nearby and with that kind of car it's very important not to put too much mileage on it because every mile costs. So I found this bus depot really close by and um, the facade of, the, of that house and the, and the car really come together and so i want to take you with me on a short time lapse of the segment of the shoot and uh, i hope you enjoy it so here we are on the location and you see that facade of the bus depot really fits the car not only in color but also in texture and the reflections are awesome I cut out this part of the whole shoot because it's the most important to the post-production we will do later and uh, put it in a time-lapse to, to speed it up. I work here on a tripod and I, I'm adjusting my camera right now. The camera is a Canon EOS R uh, with a 24 to 105 f4L lens on it and I put a polarizer on it. This is mainly because I want to get rid of the glare of the windshield because I want to see the interior. The camera settings are f8 and ISO 100 because I want to have the full details on that car. I shoot seven brackets from 1 over 1000 to 1 over 15 to get every highlight and every shadow clearly because I wanted to work with luminosity mask in the post production. You will see that later on. And um, that's already it, the whole magic. And uh, you see I already set up the next shot. So this was the shoot and location. Luckily everything went smooth and we had great weather, great people, so only good pictures can be made, can they? I want to take the chance and say this episode is presented by Racecar Automotive Photography. Uh, race car photography is focused on capturing your car professionally, so if you're interested, check the link in the description. After the shoot, I came home and loaded all the images to my computer and into Lightroom, where the post-production obviously starts. A lot of tutorials just go as a Photoshop file that made layers visible and tell you, oh, that happens and that happens. I want to take a different approach here and take you along the post-production, really. So it's a bit a longer video and sometimes, please excuse that, there are a bit breaks in talking because I really was focused on creating that image but I think it gives you a feel of the workflow and everything. So I want to start in Lightroom and hope you enjoy it. All right, guys, I'm now right, right here in Lightroom. I have imported my seven images that I shot on location. Um, you see, there are seven images from pretty dark underexposed to pretty overexposed. That's because we want to work with luminosity masks later on in Photoshop. First of all, I have to select them all and press D on the keyboard 
to bring the development tool. Um, at this point, I probably have to excuse all my programs are in German because, yeah, I'm naturally German speaking. So uh, that's why I hope you can follow along nevertheless. So in here in the de development tool, um, I'm selecting still all seven images and do the same work to all I already did this uh, before, so I just brought up the, the shadows a little bit. Worked here on the structure, the clarity, and the dynamics and the colors a little bit. And of course, checked these two boxes for the chromatic aberrations and the lens corrections. Um, that's pretty much it. I already see I just adjusted the white balance a little bit to more neutral than it was before. So it's it's very minor adjustments that I do here. And that's already all. So I select them all and right click and send them into Photoshop as layers uh, because all the rest we will do there. So let's load them up. All right, now we have all these seven layers stacked up uh, here in Photoshop. Next thing I will do is order this in a, in a different order than it came in. So I bring up the brightest exposure on top of the darkest, the second brightest on top of the second and so on. So I have on the bottom one the, what the camera sees as the perfect image. So. Um, as I already mentioned, I work with luminosity mask. That's probably quite different to others that work with like light painting or something. But I guess with paint job of the car and all, light painting doesn't make much sense. So I decided to just go with luminosity mask to bring all the the dark parts and the bright parts to get a perfectly balanced image. Um, there are seven, several different options if you want to work with luminosity mask. There are a lot of panels that you can download, some free, some cost something, but uh, if you use it regularly, it's absolutely uh, worth the money. I work with Raya Pro. It's just one I downloaded a few years ago and I'm still used to, to use. And um, the panel that I use the most is the quick planning because it I think it features everything that I need. Let's start with the with the work here. First of all, although we shot on a tripod, um, I want to align all my images because there is still the chance of little wobbly and um, you want to minimize that. Yeah, you see Photoshop found something. We have some edges around. That's perfect. So I select the darker exposure, not the darkest, this is the minus one exposure, press start, um, okay, and let Raya do its job. So I got six different masks which I can play with to see which one affects the image like the way I want. So that's too bright, that's too dark, something like in the middle is always pretty good, that's still too bright, four or three. What I'm looking is, is is the paint job in the bright areas, like here on the door or on the fenders here. That's too bright, we will work that out later. But that looks pretty natural, so I select uh, blending number three, press select. Alright, then we have, uh, I don't know what that should be, but let's delete that. But that's a little bit too bright for, for my liking. So if you reduce the effect here, it just looks more natural and that's what we what we want in that stage we want a natural looking image uh, 50 70 looks pretty good if you see if I click it before and after we have in in this area for example a very difference and bring back the tonal and the the, the color of the of the paint shop so it looks real like the human eye and so we do the same with the brighter exposure uh, that's a plus one to the camera again press start okay and see what what we have an offer so that's we'll, we'll look here on the on the darker parts of the image like here on the grill um, that's too dark still too dark uh, i like a bit of contrast but that's too much 
that looks pretty good here we can see a lot of details on the two yeah i guess i go with the two that's perfect so you see a really different but it makes the image a bit flat so again we go there and dial it down a little bit let's try 70 maybe a bit more how about 80 80 looks good. I want it a little bit flat on that on, on that second because it can bring up the contrasts later, but that way I have all the details and can work with it. So it looks very good. And that's the part with the, the blending from the images with uh, Raya at that moment. If I click here, you can see quite a difference, especially on the darker parts where the details come out more. So. I guess that was absolutely worth it. Next on, we go to the minus two exposure, which is actually already pretty dark, but on certain points, we will have some areas where we can use that. And for that one, I use a, a special technique that I found out over the years. Uh, basically select the light and um, make a mask of it and blur it quite hard. You see, it tones down all the bright areas that's that's pretty that actually looks pretty good and and that way we bring back these very bright parts of the paint job or even on the background but that's a bit much so we want it naturally and not like hdr style so bring back this let's check it with 25 okay go up a little bit more like 40 for the paint job I really like that what I don't like is this area there's I like the reflection so I go on the mask take a brush make it big not that big but big and soft choose black 100% opacity and paint that just out good so that brings a little bit more detail in the paint job and I'll do the same for the bright exposure that's a minus two um, which will select mainly this area I guess and maybe a little bit of the tire and on the interior so I'll let that action run too you see that's pretty bright so we have to tone that pretty pretty down like 15 go up to 25 so it's a bit of, it's a bit of a game between uh, having it not too bright and not too too dark you can pl play with that pretty much so I like that so that's pretty cool so that's basically the, the the main image and from there we go working that's what I think I saw on location it's maybe a little bit shy on contrast but we can work on that later that's not a problem now we already start to bring out a little bit of creativity and and a special touch to the images so i select the darkest exposure right here so it's pretty dark make a copy of that pressing command j on a mac but i want to use that right now i shift it up so and make a mask by pressing option on mask I get a, a black mask so nothing is comes through and select a brush with B and that should be pretty big and of course soft that looks good but white not black by pressing X you can change those colors and bring back the the opacity to let's say 30 30 is a pretty good amount yeah 28 is fine but 30 so paint a little bit of that uh, here on the bottom to give it a bit of a dimension and maybe a little bit more all right that looks already pretty good bit too close to the car so I change it to black and make like uh, that's better yeah that 
that's better. That's alright, so we bring back this one and chrome parts or very shiny silvery parts are directly hit by the sun. They're pretty, 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 pretty <laughs> overexposed. So what I wanted to do is to select the white areas with a, with a path tool, uh, that's P on the keyboard, and bring the darkest exposure just in that part in to, to tone that very bright down. Uh, we have to see how, how good we can bring that back because it is pretty bright. That's something I didn't pay attention to on location. Somehow I just didn't see it. So uh, I close the path here. I press Command Enter. That makes it to a selection. I press Shift F6 um, and feather it a little bit by just one pixel. That just makes it look natural. And I press the mask here. And let's see, that looks pretty good. But we want to bring it down just a bit. Make it more natural. So we have the detail back in. Perfect. Next up, we have the brightest exposure. And you may guess it, we will use that for the interior of the car. Because, especially with that car, it is important to show the interior because it's a special edition. The classic silver arrow look with the silver paint and the red interior. It is pretty dark on, on certain areas and therefore we go and make a selection of everything that we want to have brighter. So uh, let me do that. That may take a, a, a little while because you want to take your time and it is accurate and Getting there, we're getting there. So just close that one, that looks good. So now I have selected all the parts of the interior that I wanted to bright up um, with some paths. And I, I go here to paths, that means paths, um, and save that by double clicking on it and interior error or something like that. <laughs> If I have to use it again, I just can click there and have it. I don't have to select it all over again. Again, I press Command Enter and Shift F, not F7, F6. Um, better it by one pixel. Click on the mask. So, of course, that's way too bright. So, what we wanted to do is dial that back, that it looks quite natural. Let's go to. Let's say about 40, that looks pretty good, but it looks a little bit flat on it because um, it's obviously too bright. So what we want to do is to apply a curves mask. So what we want to do is to apply that just on the part we selected before. That for we press option that gives you that little arrow and you click and it's just affecting this image or better this part that we have selected. So. Now I start to play with the with the curve until uh, give it a bit more contrast that it looks make it look better and make it a bit darker. It should look natural but bright, so that looks pretty pretty good. That looks pretty like I remember it from the shoot. Oops. So if I turn that off and on and off and on you see quite a difference i think that it's a bit too bright so i'm going on the mask press b for a brush make it a little bit better, smaller still soft and paint over it so that way it's more natural looks way better. All right, what I do next is group that all and call that base. You see, I don't 
rename the layers too much. Um, you probably should do that to find anything, but um, it's your workflow, you know where which layer is. Um, what I want to do next is press Command Option Shift E, which flattens the image. So I can um, make that invisible and it's still there. And press Command J and make a copy of the same layer. So I have twice the image as a, as a reference. Let's call that background. And let's call this car. You, you will see later what I want to do with that. We work on the car here and now starts a little bit the fiddly part because we wanted to mask out the whole car to separate it later from the background. And therefore we still, we use again the, the, the path tool, so P on the keyboard and start making the selection. Step by step, you will all again take your time for that. Don't rush it because that's a very important part of the whole process. And I also will take my time for that. So I speed that a little bit up and catch up again when I'm close to finish it. So, all right, I now have selected the outline of the car. Um, that took me around uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And that's for I wanted to save that. Path, again, here going on path, double click on, the, on that one. Now I just want to make some minor adjustments, like for example, that one. Just some some small areas that I like to call cut out. Again, that one. No, that's the door. That's okay. Yeah. All that cutouts. And there we go. So what do we want to do next? Let's um, select the car and the, um, separate it from the background. Um, therefore, we select the, the path we called core. We directly want to make a selection out of it. So we press command and click on that little preview. You see there's a that rectangle with pointed lines. And as soon as you click on it, you have the whole car selected with the marching ends. And I, of course, want to leave out the little cutouts that we did before. So I press command and option. You see it gives that minus. Click on the cutouts and so we have just the car. Again, feather it by one pixel, shift F6 on the keyboard, press OK and go on the mask. So we have the car perfectly masked out that we can see here. That looks a bit weird because of the shadow, of course, but um, it makes all sense in the end. So that separated the car from the background, which is very important for the next step because we wanted to apply a filter on the background to make it a little bit more artistic, pleasing to the eye, let's say it like that. So uh, we disable the car and bring back the background. That's Therefore, I go to filters, you can see that right now, and um, work with the Luminar, uh, the older version, the Flex version for that. Bring it into that. Awesome. And um, I have four own looks, which I worked mostly. We will see one of them, the Afterglow Maserati. Sounds great. <laughs> uh, later, uh, for the moment, we select Mustang Blue. Blau. <laughs> Um, which comes from, a, from an older set of images I took, um, but in that instance I want to change the LUT 
which is basically the main part on that from Manhattan to Red Trace, um, which in fact tones down all of the colors than red, which is for that image just perfect. So I use that. Um, there are a lot of different settings already integrated in that, so um, I won't go further into that. Um, if you don't have uh, Luminar, there are several different other options. Uh, where you can achieve the same look, so um, it's not mandatory to, to have that. We're back in Photoshop, applied the, the lot. I think it looks way, way more creative and artsy than before. What I don't like is it also changed pretty much the car, so that's why we cut it out. Yeah. Now we can make it visible and I have to perfectly lit car, the car how it looks in the image, which looks a bit arty. Let me see, I like the red pretty much of the seat, so I press option and copy the background on top and then grab that mask that we had for the interior again, Just press option and copy the mask on that. And that looks pretty cool. It's maybe a bit down, let's tone it down just a bit. Yeah, that looks way, way more better. Awesome. The next step, let's call that rats. <laughs> I click on the background layer because I wanna adjust the colors just a little bit. So I go, here to the color panel and again press option to apply just on the background layer and here play with the colors just a little bit so the reds there are a lot of reds that are a bit distracting from the red from the interior so I'll take them completely out of the background now yellow I like the yellow lines here in, in on the floor that gives a little bit of a color contrast to the whole image so I want to bring them a bit up uh, that's uh, that's pretty cool but maybe a bit darker you see a difference no? yeah that's cool that's maybe tone a little bit to the orange side that's too red. Still at 15, looks pretty good. That looks cool. The greens, let's see. I mostly pull it to plus 100 to see where our greens. Well, most of them are in the lamp here, but we will take that away later anyway. So take them completely out. The science. The whole background is cyan. But the maxi black and white, that's a bit, I like it. It's a cool contrast to the reds, so we don't bring it down completely. The blue, of course, is pretty much the same. I leave a little bit in. Like that. That looks good. And the magendas, I usually don't like the magenta, so throw them completely out. So that gives it a more neutral look. Turn it on and off. You see how the focus goes more to the car than before. What I want to do next is some retouch. So I usually make two new layers it's called retouch. That's the German word for it. <laughs> and um, apply the car mask to the one uh, by clicking option on the mask and pull it to the one and again to the other one but then whoops but then selecting the mask from command i and invert it so i have the option to just work on the background and just work on the car and if i have to stamp something or so it doesn't get blurry so i have a clear difference between those two so let's start with the background let's call it retouch background 
we touch car you see uh, everything that's black do is, doesn't get touched so I don't have to be have to worry if I accidentally came into the car with some stamps or most of the time I start with the healing brush because it just works great here in Photoshop just mask what you want to get out and uh, most of the time Photoshop get it, get it right, I'm still fascinated by that, but how that works, but it's just great. That's, that's also a, a work that you want to take a little bit of time to get all the debris and, and, and stuff out that you won't see on location. I will skip that forward again a little bit to not bore you with hours of clicking and seeing dust removed. So it looks pretty clean right here. What is really distracting is this lamp right here, which I don't like, so let's stamp that out too. And the lamp is gone. So that's pretty much it for the background. Now let's do the same for the car. As the car was prepared for the shooting and uh, clean and everything, there shouldn't be too much debris on it, just from the drive to the location. And that should be a quick job. All right. Now that all is clean up, what I wanted to do is to press command option shift E to flatten that image again, uh, don't worry. Um, press right on it and make a smart object out of it. Um, that's probably gonna take a few seconds. And then press command shift A to go into camera raw. Here we wanted to select the gradient fillers and I'm going to take, make one from the bottom up, like that, and tone it a little bit darker, just to intensify that effect that we have already. Just a little bit, don't, don't overdo it. We wanna have structure and everything. And I'm going to take one from the top down, like, like here to the doors, and do the opposite, bring it a little bit on the brighter side. 35 looks good. And I wanna go to the circle. Um, choose a relatively soft edge here and make that around the car like that, just a little bit. Make sure it's inverted. So you work on the outside, not on the car. I bring that back just a little bit. Just that's a that's like a slight vignette to to get your eyes focused on the car. Press OK. As it is a, a smart object, you can adjust it whenever you want. And um, you see, it's just a slight little adjustment, but it makes quite a difference. It's just looking more subtle in here. The next thing I wanted to do is going to adjust the contrast and the tonalities a little bit. So we go, to, we make a tone here, and um, what I pretty much is to press auto because that does a pretty good job with the the darks and the highlights. It's um, but it always brightens up my images. I don't know. The slide is okay. So we go to 1.05. We'll leave it like that. Yeah, that looks good. That looks pretty good. The next step I wanted to do is again with the Raya Pro plugin that you can download. Um, I want to have a mask with the, the highlights. Um, here it's called Bright Highlights in the Dutch and Burn panel. 
and I want to have a mask with the shadows. Here he calls light and shadows. It's just the easiest way for me to do. Now it brightens up the shadows as it says, so <laughs> we can blame them. I want to make a curve and bring up the shadow mask by pressing option to the curves layer. So, and delete that one. Then we go back to the bright highlights. You see, we, it brightens up all the highlights that we have, but it's a bit too much because that would nearly destroy everything that we did before. So, 50, 60, let's go with 60. 60 is pretty good, but I don't like that it took out here so much. So we take the brush, the black brush and So we can maintain the brightness of the car and then go to the curves, the shadow mask on it and just play a little bit to see what, what looks good. I'll probably just bring it down a tad, just a tad. All right, that looks good for me. The next step I wanted to do, and I think that gives a bit of more of atmosphere to the image, is I wanted to turn on the lights. For some reason we forgot to do that on location. Uh, on the later images they are on, but um, it is how it is, so luckily we can do that afterwards. What we want to do is to select an ellipse here, um, white contour, white area, that's okay, and pretty much fill up that ellipse that it fits in here. All right, that looks good. First of all, I want to do a smart object of that as well, because we're going to apply um, another filter, and that's the Gaussian blur. Um, 1.5 looks pretty good. We can adjust it later. And I'm going to change that. Yep, that looks good. So that doesn't look like the light is on yet. So we're going to press Command J, copy that, uh, bring it back to normal. And the Gaussian blur by double clicking it on the Gaussian. Bring it like to 25. Maybe that's too much. 25. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll bring that down to 90. Call that light. All right. Next step is uh, again to flatten the image on a new layer. So Command Shift E and um, I again use the Luminar Flex for that next step. So uh, go to Filter Skylum and load the image right here. I like on my image to, to have some kind of sun flares in it, but not too dominant. So I have this, uh, I have to glow a Maserati called Preset that comes from a Maserati I showed earlier on the same location. But this time I take out that photo filter that I have here uh, that takes everything into a bluish tone. But you see it gives me that sun right here. Press OK. Bring it back into Photoshop. If you don't have the Luminar Flex or AI or how's it called, the actual version, I don't know. You can achieve the same look by um, blurring an ellipse. What I don't like here right now is the light goes over the car here where it actually can't be. So I make a mask, select the black brush, 100 opacity is fine, and paint it out wherever it actually can't be to make it more realistic. pretty good and there we have it that's pretty much the whole 
workflow for that image. Although I think we can add a little more. By doing that, I'm going to the photo filters here in Photoshop. Uh, well, that's too much. Uh, I like to have the lighter one, but that would be too much yellow. Only thing that's left is to, to save it. Okay, back in Lightroom. I'm going to the development pool, press R because I want to cut it a little bit and I actually want to have it 16 to 9 for the... Okay, that's the final image of the Mercedes AMG SLS. So obviously this was not the only image I took of this car and here are a few more final images for you to enjoy of this beautiful Mercedes. Are you still with me? That's awesome, because that's a really long video. Nevertheless, I hope there were some useful informations, new tips, or at least something to enjoy for you. If you liked what you see, please consider to subscribe or like the video. That would help me very much. So thank you very much for viewing. I leave you with a few outtakes and see you next time. Bye. The camera can't be hidden. Love the Now that let me take that out. Or was it? Jesus Christ, that's way harder than I thought. Smooth operator, smooth operator. Subscriber, subscriber, subscriber. So, 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 hey, Stop doing that. So <laughs> I'm crying, man. What the heck?